Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 174, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, Marwa. And I don't know why, but some for some reason, you're small today in a little box <laughs> there. I will we'll have to figure that out for next week. Um, this is the low budget show, so we couldn't afford a bigger box for you. Um, so um, in the Talan Cinematic Universe. Uh, so today we are going to talk something uh, that I think is, uh, it's a little bit outside the realm of a lot of what people do uh, in Apex. A lot of Apex developers are Oracle first or PL SQL first, and JavaScript is very secondary. And dynamic actions have really brought that client side JavaScript to, to everyone, but it's still important to understand a little bit about the JavaScript um, event model. Uh, in particular, uh, dynamic actions are essentially JavaScript, except when we do a few little things where we can call back to the database, make some AJAX calls, that kind of thing. Um, so tell me a little bit about the event model, Marwa, and give me an example of how it can uh, be problematic. Yes, it's when you when we have different actions and we need to execute them in a certain order. So we need to pay attention to the order of executions of that action so that we do not get some actions expressed in other actions. How do we multi-thread in PL SQL? Well, in Apex, we can use the background processes. And in PL SQL, we can use the DBMS scheduler to kick things off. Yes, so it's really it's a conscious effort. If you're doing it in PL SQL, you have to know in Apex, and we'll, we'll do more on background processes. I really like them, but in Apex, you have to explicitly say, I want this to run in the background. Or in PL SQL, you have to say, I want to create a DBMS scheduler job. You have to do work to make it run in the background. It's not the same in JavaScript. Uh, things just uh -huh. happen. So, so let's take a look at your example. Why don't we share your screen and tell me, um, tell me what's going on. And I'll yes. go ahead and kick off our timer on my side. Go ahead. Right. So on this page, uh, I have a page item and a button that will trigger a dynamic action. Let's take a look at the dynamic action that I have on the button. The first action is the server side code. I'm just setting the value of the page item one and then returning that item. And the second action is an alert, which says that server side code has finished. That's and can it. you just plus up just a little bit? Yes. There we go. Great. Okay. Great. So you're just gonna you're gonna set item one and give me an alert. So let's take a look at it. See what happens. All right. So there we go. I saw item item one, but okay. I saw the alert, but then the page automatically submitted. But there's no submit action in your dynamic action. So I see, I see what happened. It did like you said. It executed the server side code, gave me a little alert, but then it, then it submitted the page. What caused that page submit? It's because by setting the value of page one item, we actually triggered another dynamic action, which does the submit page. That's ah, why. Okay. Um, and so, how do we solve that? So um, first, um, I need to um, suppress the changes. So I'm going to check this on, switch this on to um, prevent this dynamic action from happening when, when, right. when returning this item. And then right. I'm, I'm going to create another action where I will try to trigger the dynamic action on the first item page. Right, because yeah. we're going to assume that, that that dynamic, we still want that dynamic action on the first page, and we want it to do whatever it might do, but we don't want to do it until after the alert. Exactly. So, we so this is... Sure, we need to make sure in JavaScript that we're doing things in the right order. Is it, and, and it's hard because some of those things will just fire off on their own otherwise. Okay, so got it. Let's see what we have then. Right. So let's see. I'm going to click on the button. Now we have our alert. Server side code has finished. I'm going to click OK. okay. Now we have the submit. And that's Perfect. it. All right. Well, so uh, we're going to jump over to my screen. I'm going to show a little bit about how this can be a problem. That's, that was a problem be 
in part because we've got this extra thing firing off. This can also be a problem even when you're in a single dynamic action and you think they're all happening in the same order. So let me give this quick example. Um, so step one, step one, it just logs, EB, instead of console.log, I prefer to use apexdebug.warn because I never need to remove it. Um, I've talked about it in the past, but it, it will log to the console. Um, and it will, warn will only log to the console, console if I'm also logged into the developer of these kinds of things. So we won't go into that. Step two does this. It does another log to the console and then set timeout is how we sleep. So it sets timeout, it sleeps for seven seconds, and then I do another log of step 2a, and then finally I'm going to log step five. These other ones are commented out. So when I do that, Marwa, what am I gonna get my log? So I'm going to get step one, mm -hmm. step two, um, and then what we have, step five, step 2a, because of the set timeout function. Ah. Right, because set timeout is automatically going to happen asynchronously in a separate thread. So, so this happens right away. We end up with step five running before step 2a. Now, there are some scenarios where that doesn't happen. Um, I'm going to show this. If I do a database action, you showed this a little bit ago, we do have the ability to say wait for a result. But we only have wait for a result in two scenarios. We have wait for a result in database actions and set value. Any of the other things we pick here, you don't have you don't have the ability to wait for the result. So if I do this, I execute my server side code, I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and run this, and you'll see in this case, um, my database action actually sleeps for several seconds. And you can see it's sleeping. Waiting and then for step result. five happened. Right, and then during that sleep, and then, but then step 2A again after that, because step <laughs> 2A was off running around on its own. Um, so I only have 26 more seconds. I want to show that, that there's also this ability, um, I'm going to turn off my timer and just keep going. I'm going to turn off this, this database action. We also know we can call Ajax calls. So I've got this Ajax call that sleeps for five, five seconds. I'm going to return to my dynamic action and enable that, make a Ajax call. We, if we look at this, now this server-side process is going to take five seconds, and then I'm going to do another warning for step 4C. The problem here is this, we, we might not realize it, this is also asynchronous. So I'm going to get step 4, then I'm going to get 4C, then I'm going to get 4B five seconds later. So let's see what happens um, really quickly. Um, our five-minute tips, I'm afraid, have sometimes turned into a little bit longer, but I'm going to do it anyway. You see, we got five, B, we got four C, and we're still waiting on five, four B. So we had to wait. Okay. So I'm going to go one step farther here. I'm going to comment this one out and say we can in JavaScript make things synchronous, um, and the way we do that is we wrap wrapper the, the calls in async. So by wrapping them in async, I can then say I want these things to be synchronous. I want to do this one. And then I want to await the response of this one before I do this one. So now I'm going to get step four, four B, and then four C. The thing is, it doesn't do anything for step five. Step five is still going to happen before step four B. So let's do this again. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'll get five. 4B and 4C. Um, right. And I'm going to tell you, there's no way around this. This is, this is the event model of JavaScript. If you want step five to happen after something in step four in your JavaScript, you need to put this step inside here and you need to wrap it in here. There's, there's no way that I'm aware of in dynamic actions to be absolutely certain that things are going to wait except in the scenarios where you have this wait for result and those wait for that wait for result is in your own um is only available well i'm going to say it's only available in um the execute server side code the set value or some plugins also uh also do that i've written a plugin that that will wait for result um so you can get wait for a result to happen in plugins as well um well 
We have gone way over our five minutes. Well, I don't think way over. I think we're only about 30 seconds over our five minutes. Um, but there you have it for Apex developers. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind. You may want to consider suppressing change events if you have events that fire on them and you need to make things happen afterwards. You can suppress the, the change, change event. And then what's the code again, uh, Marwa, if I do suppress the change event? It's apex.event.trigger. OK. And you pass in. What do I pass into Apex event trigger? We pass in the triggering element, the, 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 the name of the page item in my case, and then the type, which is change. Change. OK, so it's hashtag item name, comma, and then change as that. Um, apex.event.trigger. Perfect. All right. Well, that's all I have. I don't even have a wisdom of the week. I don't have a joke. I got nothing else today, um, except I suppose to say it's spring. Have a happy weekend. Happy in, If you're in the States, happy Memorial Day. It's a long weekend. Um, and if you like the show, like the show, right? All Thank those you. things. Um, thanks so much, Marwa. Appreciate your help. Thank you, Anton.